We are going to build an 8x6 high eave model. This model has toughened glass. To build any other size in the high eave range, the principle is the same, but involves longer or shorter bars and a different number of components to suit the length. The parts list at the beginning of the installation booklet will confirm the quantity required for your particular greenhouse size. You'll require the following tools. A 10mm nut spinner or spanner, crosshead screwdriver, long nosed pliers are useful to assist the beading process, safety goggles and gloves are recommended for protection, step ladders, you must be experienced in working at height, if installing onto hard standing, a masonry drill and hacksaw, a shovel if installing onto soft ground. You may find a double cup suction lifter of use when handling glass. If you intend to install on soft ground, then you will need some ready-mix post-mix to secure the base anchors. Diagrams of each profile for reference can be found at the beginning of the booklet. Side Frame Assembly Lay out the parts for the first side frame assembly, ensuring that the bolt channels of the glazing bars are facing skywards. You are viewing the assembly from the inside. Slide glazing beading into both beading channels of each glazing bar and push back down the bar to prevent stretching. Slide a bolt into each end of each glazing bar and an extra bolt into each bar that will receive a cantilever brace. The 8x6 high eave has one cantilever on the middle bar. Fit the eaves gutter bar to the top of each glazing bar by pushing the bolts through the holes in the gutter. Make sure the glazing bar is pushed right up under the gutter. Attach the built-in base to the bottom of the glazing bars in the same way, but do not put a nut on the outer two bars until the two angle tie bars are fitted. Make sure all glazing bars are tight to the bottom of the base section before tightening up. For hard standing, Slide three bolts into the bolt channel of the base and fix an angle bracket. Slide an extra bolt at each end of the base to enable the corner bracket to be fixed later. Hard and soft standing. Repeat the same procedure for the other side frame assembly. Rear end assembly. Lay out the parts for the rear end assembly ensuring that the bolt channels of the glazing bars are facing skywards. Side corner bars are mitered at one end. Roof corner bars are mitered at both ends. Corner bars and end glazing bars are handed, so can be correctly identified here and with reference to the booklet. Roof corner bars have the letter R marked at the ridge end of the bar. The letter R is covered on powder coated models, so the center hole in the roof corner bar should be positioned so that it is nearer the ridge than the eaves. You're viewing the assembly from the inside. Slide glazing beading into both beading channels of each glazing bar and into two of the three beading grooves in all four corner bars. The middle groove is only used if you have an internal partition. Secure the eaves and ridge gusset plates to each corner bar as shown here by inserting bolts into the hole in the corner bar and then in turn the gusset plate. Don't put the nut on the top bolt of the gusset plate until the horizontal brace is fitted. Slide one nut and bolt into the bolt channel of both ends of all four corner bars and fingertip tighten approximately 50 millimeters from each end. Before fitting the end glazing bars, insert an extra bolt into the bolt channel to enable fixing of the long horizontal brace. Attach all the components together as shown. Ensure the long horizontal brace is fitted to the top bolt in the eaves gusset plate, keeping all nuts loose at this stage. Make sure the glazing bars are tight down to the built-in base sill. When you have fitted everything to the correct position, you can begin to tighten all the nuts. Starting at the ridge, ensure the gap behind the gusset plate is minimized before tightening and repeat the procedure behind the gusset plates on both eaves. Mm -hmm. 
slide a nut and bolt into each end of the built-in base, and an additional two if you're installing onto hard standing. If you're installing onto hard standing, attach an angle bracket to the middle bolt of the base. Door End Assembly The door end is assembled in a similar manner to the rear end with a few exceptions. Lay the components out again, ensuring the bolt slots are facing up and the corner bars are in the correct orientation, the same as the rear end. Insert the beading to the corner bars and glazing bars as before. However, the inside edge of the glazing bar needs only approximately 150 millimeters of beading at the top for the glazing above the door. The base section on the door end is in two parts rather than one, and the long glazing bars are longer than the equivalent rear glazing bars. Slide three bolts into the top of each glazing bar. The last bolt will attach the glazing bar and the corner bar together in the same way as the rear end. The first bolt inserted attaches to the short horizontal brace, which in turn attaches to the top bolt of the eaves gusset plate but don't tighten the nuts yet. Moving now to the bottom of the greenhouse, engage the bottom sill with the two built-in base sections by pushing the angle of the sill under the locator as shown. Slide two bolts into the bottom of each glazing bar and three bolts into the bolt channel of the built-in base. If you're fitting the greenhouse on soft standing, then you need only one bolt in the base channel. If you're installing onto hard standing, attach an angle bracket to the middle bolt of the base. Attach the bottom bolts in the glazing bar to the bottom sill, but don't put the nut on yet. Attach the rectangular plate to the two bolts in the glazing bar and the closest bolt in the built-in base. Ensure that the glazing bar is right down to the sill. Attach the diagonal angle to the top bolt in the rectangular plate, then put the nuts on. Some greenhouses have a single bolt slot glazing bar in this position. Attach the main door track support approximately 130 millimeters down from the corner bar. This part will be packed with the door panels. Take care to fit the door track support the correct way up. The slots at the end should be open at the top as shown. Now tighten all the nuts ensuring that the gaps behind the gusset plates are tight. Slide three bolts into the bolt channel at the left of the top door track Stand the sub-assembly over and fit the main door track to the main door track support and line the bolts up with the three holes on the main door track support. The door opens center to right, so fit the top door track so that it covers the center and right of the greenhouse as shown. Door frame assembly. Lay out the door parts as shown with the bolt channel of the bars facing the floor. Ensure that the door bar is positioned so that three holes are at the bottom and two holes at the top. The top door panel has the Elite label. The bottom panel has the door skid fitted. Your greenhouse comes as standard with a lock and one of the infill panels has a hole cut to receive the lock. We'll fit the lock in the second panel down, but you could fit it in the third panel down if you wish. The lock can be fitted to the door at the end of the process. Insert glazing beading into the inside channel of both glazing bars. The lower infill panel interlocks with the bottom door panel. Fix the door together by screwing the self-tapping screws through the glazing bar, then in turn into the self-tapping screw groove in each door panel. A manual screwdriver or electric is acceptable. Fix the door wheels into place by pushing the long bolt provided through the center of the wheel, then through the hole in the top panel from underneath. Make sure the collar of the wheel is pressed up against the top panel. Add the washer and locking wheel nut to the bolt and tighten. Turn the door over and slide the brush draft excluder into each bolt channel of the glazing bar. Add a nut and bolt to the bottom of the channel to prevent the brush from slipping down. Then cut the brush level with the top of the glazing bar. Door handles are fitted centrally to the panel of your choice. 
offer the handle to the panel and mark the holes before drilling two holes 7 mm in diameter. Roof Vent Lay out the vent parts as shown. Identify the slam bar and attach two stay pins to the outer side of the angle using M4 nuts and bolts. If you're fitting an automatic roof vent, then ignore this instruction. Insert beading into the beading channel of the vent top rail and both side rails. Slide a bolt into each end of both side rails. Line up the holes in the top and bottom rails and tighten, ensuring the top and bottom rails are tight up to each side rail. Note the correct orientation of the components, bolt channels of the side rails facing up, V grooves of the bottom rail facing up, and the hooked hinge of the top rail facing up. This is being viewed from the inside. Fit the casement stay to the bottom rail using the M4 nuts and bolts. Stays are not needed if an automatic roof vent is fitted. Repeat for the other vents. Assembly of Greenhouse Unit Lift the first side assembly into position by the rear end so that the gutters are on the outside. Slot the eaves gutter bar into the small space between the roof and side corner bar so that the gutter is outside the end frame and the two flanges that form the angle of the roof and side are inside and tight up against the bolt channels in the roof and side bar. Bolts that were inserted into each end of the corner bars will now be used to fix the sub-assemblies together. Line up the slots at the end of the eaves bar with the bolt channel in the roof corner bar and slide the bolt down before tightening. Do the same at the top of the side corner bar, but this time you must take the nut off completely to allow the side diagonal tie bar to attach. Moving to the bottom of the side corner bar, attach the side built-in base to the bottom of the side corner bar in the same way. Repeat for all four corners of the greenhouse. Moving to the ridge, insert beading into both sides of the ridge bar. Then fix to the top of the roof corner bars. vertical part of the ridge will be outside and pointing skywards. The bolts previously inserted into the roof corner bars will slide into the slot of the ridge on each side to secure. Insert glazing beading into both beading channels of all the roof glazing bars. Insert an extra bolt into the roof bars that will take a cantilever brace to match the side assembly. Also attach one extra bolt into the roof bars onto which the roof vents will fit. Consult the booklet for information regarding how many cantilevers and vents your greenhouse has to ensure the correct number of bolts are fitted. Attach the roof bars to the ridge and gutter bars. It's advisable for longer greenhouses to start at the middle to ensure the roof remains in square. You must ensure that each roof bar is tight up against the ridge and the gutter. Slide the vent into the ridge in the open position.
fit the slam bar to the previously inserted bolts in the same bay as the vent. When you're happy that the roof vent opens and closes correctly, insert a black tube into the ridge bar on both sides, tight up against the vent top rail to prevent it moving. Insert a small screw into the tube to expand. Attach the cantilever braces to the previously inserted bolts across the gutter. For longer greenhouses, you must ensure that there is no sag in the ridge or bow in the gutters before securing the cantilever bar. Soft standing. For installation on soft standing, you must dig out in each corner of the greenhouse and the base joint if the greenhouse is over 12 foot to enable the corner bracket to be fitted to the base. Fit the corner brackets to the unoccupied bolt at each end of the base section so that the end with four holes will be underground. Do not concrete until the greenhouse is squared up and fully glazed. Hard standing. Offer the end of the corner bracket to the base Mark and cut level with the bottom of the base, then attach using the unoccupied bolt at each end of the base. Do not anchor the greenhouse to the hard floor until everything is squared up and fully glazed. Squaring up. Before glazing, it is important to ensure the greenhouse is squared up. Measure both diagonals on the floor from front left to back right and then front right to back left to ensure both measurements are the same. If they're different, gently push and pull the corner until square is achieved. Insert a pane of glass into each corner of the roof. The glass sits in a retaining lip on the gutter and also runs along the beading on the glazing bar and corner bar. You must ensure the glass runs parallel to the gutter and the corner bar. If it runs out, then the roof is out of square. Line up the door wheel with the top door track and bottom door sill and slide across until the second wheel enters the top track. You might need to raise or lower the door track support to achieve the correct height. Finally, the end of the top door track is supported by a vertical angle section. Fix the vertical angle support to the bolt channel at the back of the top door track and move the support left or right until the hole at the bottom lines up with the self-tapping screw groove in the side corner bar, secure with a screw. Fitting the lock and keep. Undo the ring nut from the lock barrel. Insert the barrel through the hole in the door panel from the outside, then reapply the ring bolt and tighten. Attach the washer, then the cam lever and screw to the inside, ensuring the cam moves in the correct direction to lock when the key is turned. Offer the door keep to the left-hand door post at the same height as the lock and secure to the bolt channel of the glazing bar using the half-headed bolts provided. Raise or lower the keep to match the height of the cam. Fitting the ramp. Engage the C-section of the ramp to the nub on the door end sill. Rotate the ramp to horizontal and screw down when the greenhouse is anchored to the floor by drilling a small hole at each end of the ramp. For soft ground, you should fit a solid product under the door end sill to enable fixing. Glazing. Offer the first piece of glass to the correct position and insert clips as shown on each side. The clip will be replaced with a wire clip that is fitted in the same way if you ordered PVC bar capping. For horticultural glass, you have smaller panes of glass that are clipped in the same way, but you have an overlap clip to join the pieces together. Muntin strips are only used when fitting full sheet toughened glass. Roof glass is clipped in the same way. But before offering up the roof glass, you must insert a roof spacer to the top edge of the pane, except where there's a roof vent, toughen glass only, as shown. For PVC bar capping, it is important that you add the capping to each roof piece before moving on to the next pane. Equally space the angle brackets previously fitted around the greenhouse. Mark the floor, then drill, plug and screw down. Nut covers are available for painted models. They just push on to give a great finish.
your greenhouse is now complete. You can find individual videos that cover automatic roof and louver vent installation, bar capping, toughened and horticultural glass fitting, shelving, staging, assembly of a five-bladed louver, rainwater kit and how to attach tying eyes into the roof.